giving those hands to Jesus. Give those praise to Christ alone. Give those worship to Him alone. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Before I go ahead with um, the word for today, I want to just make welcome Sister Jelin as she takes testimonies. Uh, jam your hands together. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for his amazing love. Amen. Please be seated. It is now time for praise report. May I call on Sister Sophie? Lord, everyone. Sorry, let me just turn around. Um, I just give God a praise and worship. Um, I just have to thank God for, well, I have two testimonies actually. Um, last week, um, with the help with one of the sisters here, um, some of you guys know my parents' house got burned and they're, the insurance is working on rebuilding the house. Um, but the thing is, in the end, um, with the basement, there is a issue and we have to do it separately. So the thing that we have to do is we have to get a new permit on our own. So um, with, with, um, with help, um, we got a permit. They were about to charge us over $2,000, but they cut in half to 1000 I had to thank God for that. <laughs> My second testimony is this week. Of course, we had to do our maintenance on our furnace. So um, sa last week Saturday, I did my maintenance. And so one of my tenants was telling me that they're having issues of hearing some male noises. So I kind of forgot that he told me, but the next day I called the uh, um, and the care. Uh, they came by that night, they said that there is some, uh, we need to change some parts on there. So the next day they came back and did some parts and they said, everything is done, everything's brand new, whatnot. But then when I got the uh, invoice, um, it was over $5,000. But then, the thing is, the best part is, I didn't pay nothing. It was all paid for. Amen. And I had to thank God for that. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sister Sophie. God is good indeed. Amen. All right, let us all rise up on our feet. It is now time to draw the well of salvation. Please welcome in one accord our Bishop Kevin Peters. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Seated. Amen. You must forgive me. You know, getting used to coming up here immediately after the praise and worship. You know, having to amend um, certain uh, procedure in our services. We keep getting perfect and perfect and perfect as time goes. Amen. I want to really thank God for the testimonies of, of supernatural provision. Praise God. And I pray that God keep giving you multi-testimonies. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody, somebody here is not hearing me. I say, may you keep experiencing multiple testimonies. Streams. Streams of testimonies flowing from the throne of grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you just lift up your right hand 
and just give God praise. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Just give him praise. Yes. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Yes. Just say something nice to him. Come on, say something nice. Say something nice. Halabala to Shatabaha. Ask the Lord to speak to you. The joy of my salvation and renew the right spirit within me. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to create in you a, a new heart, a new spirit. As the songwriter say, Then cast me not away from your presence, O oh Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto the joy of my salvation and renew the right spirit within me. Can you sing that part again one more time? And renew and renew the right spirit within me. Can you ask from the Lord to renew the right spirit within you? And renew the right spirit within. I don't know what you're struggling about right now, but I ask him and renew the right spirit within me. Oh, sing, cast me not away, cast me not away from that presence, oh Lord. Take not the Holy Spirit from me and restore unto me. The joy of my salvation and renew the right spirit within me. May God create in you a new heart. Ah, Lado Shah, you didn't hear that. The Bible says a new heart and a new spirit has He given to us. Amen. That we by it may cry, Abba Father. Somebody here just wave those hands. Wave those hands to him. Sing us the dear planted for the water so my soul. After thee. Desire than thy own to worship you alone. more time you alone go ahead sing you alone are my strength I see you alone and my spirit be oh you you alone are my heart desire I don't know if God is your desire today. I don't know if your heart pumps for Him. 
day after day will I seek your face, O oh Lord. I give you praise. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Sing, oh. Come on, come on, come on, pray in other tongues. Pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues. Got it. 
a dead God. Our God is alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Said the Lord of hosts, I will cause your graves to open and I will command you to come out of the graves in the name of Jesus. Every destiny that has been buried in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by the power of the Most High, you're coming out in the name of Jesus. You're coming out in the name of Jesus. You're coming out in the name of Jesus. Every dead situation, every dead situation, miracle, said the Lord of hosts, I'm causing you to arise. I'm causing you to arise. I declare, arise, 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 arise. Yaka Kambaraka de Shatabaha. Woo! For he said, he said, he said, out of your belly shall flow gushes of living waters. Eko paraka paraka teya. Every dead stream that has been oozing out from you, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Lord God Almighty. I cause your bitter water called Mara to be changed to sweet water. In the name of Jesus, I decree, let the bitter experience be sweet. Let the broken hands, let the broken things be fixed. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise. What a God. Somebody say, What a God. What a God. What a God. What a God. I see the atmosphere change to favor you. That amen is not born again. I say, I see the cloud be gathered. The amazing thing is that when the cloud be gathered, the Bible said they empty themselves as rain. I see a rain of abundance in the name of Jesus upon your household. I see a rain of abundance upon your house. I see a rain of abundance upon your head. I see a rain of abundance. I oh yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain in the morning, let it rain in the new day, let it rain at night. Somebody declare, I receive in the name of Jesus. I receive in the name of Jesus my reign of abundance, my reign of prosperity. In the name of Jesus, in this season, there shall be no casting down. I decree. My, 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 my doors are open. The lines are falling in places and places for me. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha. Oh. Oh, living just a rabosha da ba da da na na ne, suto para kati para na na na. Oh, ina na malosha da 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 Oh, Nina, 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 Nina,
Let's go. Because he who lives, oh, I can face tomorrow. Your tomorrow is sure. Hallelujah. Because he, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter what you see today. Oh, all of them. journey to the throne great throne throne room hallelujah when you worship the lord will make you a worship <laughs> when you become a worshiper he builds you up like a marine seal destroyer when God inhabits your praise and worship Satan dehabits you you didn't get that <laughs> Satan can inhabit too but when God comes down himself and inhabits your praise your prayer points become less because there is no way he can step into your life without changing situations I tell you when you can't pray praise when you can't praise worship praise is a weapon one of the greatest weapons in the world, in the spirit world. When you praise God, He comes down Himself. When you, when you spend that time in soaking yourself in worship, He gives you words. Great revelations are better than the place of worship. Because when you worship, you step into the presence of A. Leon himself. I pray you build a worship lifestyle. I pray you be a worshiper. Because, you see, this is one thing that we will keep doing when we transition over there. Praise and worship. Is the only consistent thing that we will keep doing for eternity whether they be prophecy whether they be whatsoever it is it will come to an end
for the Bible says, I behold the 24 elders. They bow before him. And the cherubims, they spread their wings, stretch it so loud, afar. And they say, Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb that was slain. He died, yet he's alive. The immortality himself that dwells in divinity. May you experience God this season in a different dimension. You must stop driving me. <laughs> play, play, but you, you, you are driving me in a kind of way that if I go that dimension, the whole service is going to change. I love this guy. Praise God. Amen. He's, he's, he, he's tapping into some place inside of my spirit that has been long ago not been tapped. Amen. I will, I will personally bless you after the service, okay? I'll bless you in cash. Somebody say, God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. get into the nitty-gritty amen turn to your neighbor and say let's get into the nitty-gritty let's dig deep let's draw from the world of salvation amen i love you all i love you all amen let me tell you there is personally i've come to understand that if you don't big up yourself nobody will big you up you must learn to big up yourself bigging up yourself is not pride it's telling it the way it is <laughs> I was watching a skit, a comedy skit, and um, this lady was driving and she splashed water on this guy walking. And the guy screamed and said, Hey, are you blind? You know, those kind of people that, you know, when something happened, they, they just come through the offensive. And the lady stopped and said, But I never knew. I'm sorry. And she drove up, she, he, he screamed. I said, so you're driving away. It will never be good for you. And listen, 
the person he's saying it will never be good for you she's <laughs> driving on the latest range rover 2021 and the lady stopped and reversed back wind down a little bit and told him i say it has already it's already good with me Amen. now you can imagine you on foot <laughs> telling a rich person it will never be well with you it's already well for the person there are certain things that the devil cannot take away from you that's why you must not worry yourself over the opinion of your enemy a lion does not lose sleep over the opinion of 10,000 goats they can contribute their horns together I say we'll use this horn to attack him but I tell you one roar of the lion every one of them will find their level you are the daughter and sons of the lion of the tribe of judah so big up yourself big up your church amen you see this church i thank god for every other church out there but you see this church this is the best church ever 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 best sets of ministers best sets of workers best sets of members best sets of partners that's why me love you amen <laughs> me don't go nowhere you know i tell you the truth me i still did me I see they are so. <laughs> Me they are so, you know. That's to let you know I'm working hard. Amen. How you day? Me day pon. Amen. All right. Are you ready now? Put on your seat belts. It's time to rock and roll. You have your Bibles with you? Lift up your Bible up. Say, this is my Bible. It's the Word of God. In this Word is written everything that concerns me. In this Word, mighty things are written concerning my destiny. I will fulfill everything to the last of the word of god in my life this is a love letter from god to me and i respond to it by study by meditating by acting upon it if you are that person let that amen come like thunder Seven keys to excellent life. Seven steps to great excellent life. I want to let you know that even as we go into this particular topic, open your spirit, man. Get your pen, get your note, jot something down because you're going to be mightily blessed wherever you are. Those of us watching online, get yourself set, set and, and steady God is about doing something mighty in your life praise God the Bible said in the book of 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 it says study to show yourself pleasing to God a workman that does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of what of truth amen study leads to meditation meditation leads to revelation revelation leads to revolution and revolution leads to change 
study leads to revelation when you study you discover revelation another word for revelation is discovery praise god something being revealed to you that before this time has not been revealed and when you come in the place of revelation revelation leads you automatically to revolution revolution talk about a decisive decision to automatically and almost immediately effecting a change through the mind am i communicating with somebody the bible says, be a transformed through the word the renewer of your mind talking about a revolutionary spirit so revolution is a decision you take when you say you have had enough and you need an instant change to situation so revolution brings you to the place of change and you discover that you have gone through one phase to the other and the phase that you arrive in is a place called change these seven major steps is a step that as a believer if you include it even in your christian life and also in your business environment because what i'm going to be saying here is, is very important if you apply it in any system it will work for you we all know that god is the beginning of everything am i communicating with somebody for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son god was there in the beginning the bible called him the alpha and the omega sometimes some people come with some kind of idea that business does not include god and you hear words like no you see you must not bring christianity into business can i announce to somebody that christianity is based morals a based on a good moral lifestyle what christianity does to every individual that is born again is it changes your moral understanding it moves you from logical thinker to competent thinker am i going to get to somebody as a born again child of god the way you do things in the past will change why because your moral standards is beginning to change and the bible becomes the foundation on which your morals are built on that's why i tell people i say don't always struggle to tell people you love them just love god you will love people for god so loved he got so drunk with love that he gave his only begotten son because of love so when you love indeed The love must be in the eyes of a logical thinker as a reckless love. Or else, it is not the love from God. God so loved and he gave. And that giving was a reckless one if we are to talk through logical reasoning. You gave the best and the only thing you have because of people you never knew before. Reckless. Your teacher... Uh, in, back in school and my teacher we call that a reckless what lifestyle but in it is actually the perfect love the love you would call the unconditional love so when we are able to understand God from this perspective we are we, we, we are able to build on that foundation so it becomes a date to this moral standard the bible becomes our standard not the book you study in school 
because there is no course called wisdom course in school wisdom is the principal thing the bible said and he said in all thy getting get what get what get what so wisdom is the base for you to understand that's why you can be a believer for many years and because you don't have the wisdom of god in you when you see certain things you are not able to understand it why because the wisdom of elohim is not resident in you i tell people i say it is not enough giving your life to christ or inviting jesus into your life that is the first step there are dimensions you must go you must keep moving don't stop many of us stopped at the place of water baptism and you've been at the level of water baptism for 25 years and when they say come as mature believer you will also bounce out too praise god just like when you call crocodile even lizard will come out you must keep seeking god there is no maturity in god like you say oh i am now matured in god i have known it all no there is no know it all in christ we keep knowing every day because no man can exhaust god so every day you study the word of god you have a new revelation that's why you see a preacher can preach one message repeatedly repeating his message why because he has no revelation but some other preacher will come and take one scripture from that one scripture he can preach seven different dimensions of message from that one scripture that talks about depths of revelation is somebody hearing me so the number one key we are looking at here is meditation joshua 1 8 god told joshua that the key to his excellent lifestyle is deep meditation the major key for him to get to that place of living an excellent lifestyle is what is meditation day and night on the word of god are you there he said this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein only in the morning only in the morning once a week twice a month three times a year he said thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou would talk about you not god your breakthrough and your prosperity is no longer in the hands of god god has released it to you you have to step into the level of understanding to be able to draw to the present what you need that has been released to you many years ago he said that thou mayest observe to do according to what so in your study and meditation you begin to discover what God actually wants you to do. You take note. So you will be noted in life. How would you know a book when you've not opened the book? How would you know God when you don't even know how his voice sounds? So if a scientist should put up, you know, I tell you, very soon, the, the cyborg is going to be taking over everything. So if a, if a robot talks tomorrow, you will say, oh, it seems like that's the voice of God. And another one will talk. So you don't even know how his voice sounds or who he is. And yet, for 30-something years, you've been calling him my father. A child that doesn't know his parents or his father is perceived as a bastard.
there is dignity when you know who your father is there is boldness when you speak because you know of him that is standing behind you you know those days when we are little we will go and look for trouble we we'll see somebody that is bigger than us very well i will go and brag before the person and tell the person i will beat you come out and by the time the individual come out we'll run and they chase us you know what we'll do we'll run behind our parents what if you don't have a parent to hide behind life will beat you very well because you have no god so meditate meditation is so serious because in meditation heaven speaks to you and interprets certain things and decodes certain things to you some of us we, we have our blessings already in our hands but they are like a locked box there is no code to open it prophecies is hanging over your head yet no code you will be great you will be rich and mighty you will be this that 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 yet there is no code to open the book of revelation the bible said this scroll was delivered to the servant of god and he said there was nobody capable to read what is written inside what a disaster that your blessing is in your hands yes you can't eat of it so you got to understand that meditation is a must praise God I tell you when you have meditation you meditate on a thing that's why sometimes when there was there is an incident the Bible say don't be in a haste to speak that's why I tell you don't be quick to reply go back meditate on it there are situations that have come my way that were so difficult to deal with and many times I have always wanted to act and God said to me shh be quiet go and sleep over it you know when somebody said let me sleep over it there is a difference between thinking over it and meditating over it when you think thinking brings questioning meditation reveals revelation did you get that when you say let me go think about it be truthful you go, you went back to question yourself why should you do that but somebody that meditates goes back to say lord speak to me and give me what direction so the next step is what direction divine direction divine direction simply means allow the almighty god to lead you and direct you in your entire life not some part of your life somebody say all all the problem with the church today is that we want him to have part of it and let us also keep part of ourselves even when you sing the song take all of me take all of me the truth of the matter is that it's only your one tie that you gave to God every other part you are the chief of your life and you keep it for yourself you decide how it happens you decide what goes on so divine direction simply means allowing God to be the director of your life affairs when you run around to ask people what do you think have you bothered to ask god what's the mind of god you want to venture into a business you want to start up a thing you want to go into a field 
that you have no authority over the first person to consider or to consult is God because you've meditated upon it you've gotten revelation but now you need divine direction to go about what you saw or heard in your time of meditation are you catching this his desire to lead you into the path of excellence is something that god enjoys to do in the book of first kings chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 first kings 8 verse 1 and 2 we'll see a story about a woman and elijah praise god and when the lord blessed everything that has to do with his servant solomon he said then solomon assembled the elders of israel and all the heads of the tribes the chief of the fathers of the children of israel unto king solomon in jerusalem that they might bring up the ark of the word of the covenant of the lord out of the city of david praise god which is in zion so verse number two and all the men of israel assembled themselves unto king solomon at the feast the mount itahim which is the seventh mount this was a direction on how the ark will be brought back everything needs orderliness anything that is not in order god is not there i went to a church sometime to preach like i will be preaching people will be crossing crisscrossing my front i say jesus the pastor will be on on his phone chatting i say what a church is this a church or a community gathering disorderliness check anywhere you find disorderliness god is not there but the bible says, for let there be orderliness when there is orderliness you find that that's why if i one of the things that irritates me when i'm preaching is when i'm preaching that is some kind of noise it cuts me off even this keyboard playing right now if someone that is not connected to the realm of the spirit be playing those keys i will know it will be cutting me off that's how deep it is somebody say i hear you god will give you divine direction that will lead you to your breakthrough and success and prosperity all you need to do is to is to follow that that he has commanded you to do in all things seek the face of god you know those days when we're growing up as believers young believers there is something that is so common about us you will always hear somebody ask you say have you sought the face of god concerning this matter but do you know that today we don't say that again we don't nobody wants to really seek the face of god we only go to god when it, it didn't work out for us we now remember it'd be like say i will now go back to god because we keep god as the secondary opinion in our lives some of us our, our our friends the place where we kept them is where god is supposed to be when a is about to happen you run to your friend um elizabeth please can you advise me on this thing and elizabeth is not a believer elizabeth is not even a commander in that field when elizabeth give you german advice by the time you apply it it blows back you will run to pastor pastor 
you need to pray if only people in the church believers would only understand and flow in obedience somebody say obedience it will cut so much prayer points the reason why we 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 struggle is because we break protocol we don't allow god to give us that direction to tell us how to move from one face to the other this is not just about pastor or church alone no in your personal life it's not even every job that you see they pay so much that is good for you oh the job they are paying so much wow not every door is an open door indeed there are some doors is the mouth of a lion or a crocodile waiting immediately you enter it will close and you can't go out again hallelujah are you there with me the next one is mentoring mentoring ask God to give you someone you can learn from follow as an example in your life that should be your personal search in you any man you cannot honor don't follow him because it will bring a curse upon you any pastor you can't obey stay away any pastor that looks too small for you be careful am i communicating with somebody in the place of success mentorship is a must you must be mentored or else you will turn around to be a tormentor and become a metilator in the eyes of people you know metilators you don't put them in the eyes because it's very hot but what does mentorship do to you mentorship helps you to scrape out those things in your body that is not needed sometimes you think you need them but in the place of mentorship you are told no you don't need it Moses mentored Joshua Joshua never said no your days are gone this is now my time the new generation Exodus 24 verse 13 Moses played the role of a mentor to Joshua every father wants their sons or daughter to do better than them any father that doesn't want his son or his daughter to do better than him is a wizard and he said unto the elders tarry here here for us until we come again unto you and behold Aaron and Hall are with you if any man have any matter to do let him come unto them praise God in the place of mentorship you hear things that ordinary members in the church don't hear you see things that ordinary people in the church can't see in the place of mentorship is a sign that you are ready to take the mantle but you must go through the process of being mentored the reason why we experience so much disorderliness is because people don't want to be mentored pastors don't want to serve it's not everybody that is approved to go and open church god didn't send every pastor you see out there to open the church There are keys when you look at a man. 
there are keys of things you must see that prove that God has sent him to run a mission, a ministry. That will be for another day. If you don't see those things, ask him well about himself, you will find out that he broke out from the church where he was before. He's under rebellion. And rebellion causes so much. Because you see all these things I'm talking about now is level one stage to another. And by the time some of us come to the place of divine direction, we can't cross. We will be there struggling because we can't give in. And paraventure, God helping, we cross divine direction, able to conquer it, allow God to direct us. We come to the place of mentorship. And in mentorship, you don't choose your pastor. Am I talking to somebody? You are not the one to choose your man of God. God said in the book of Jeremiah, he said, I will give you pastors after my heart. So some persons are under the wrong people for the wrong reason. Is a church does not mean that God didn't call the man of God, call him, but that's not your man of God. Praise God. Are you still there? Elijah mentored Elisha. Elisha was older than Elijah. Very, very well. First Kings 19, verse 16. You read it down. First Kings 19, 16. Elisha was so old that he had started losing hair when he went under Elijah to, to serve under him. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shouts, Thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Methahor, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Instruction. Anoint this one as king, then this one, anoint him to take over from you. In the place of mentorship, age is useless that's the problem many cannot the reason why many can't be blessed in today's movement as church because they believe that you must be older than them in everything for you to talk and to give them direction we must be smart and be wise that the devil uses these things as a weapon to sway our hearts hallelujah are you ready for the next the next locate your calling the bible tells us that there are diversities of gifts and calling first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 to 31 first corinthians 12 1 to 31 there are diversities of gifts and calling the gifts you you operate is the gift that god has called you in but you must first of all locate it understand it having the gift you are allowed to operate as the lord grants you grace Praise God. Find out what you can do with enthusiasm, interest, and fulfillment. Don't struggle. Because anywhere you struggle, you are not gifted there. If you are called as a sanctuary keeper, you are gifted. You are gifted there. That is your calling. If you are called as a preacher, you will preach. The signs shall follow. These signs shall follow them that believe. And the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them one of the good things your mentors do in your life as a mentor the great thing that happens in, in you is that he looks at you and God opens his eye to know where you are called and he gives you direction to fit in there 
all these years even after giving my life surrendering my life to jesus 1994 july 13th i never understood where i was called where my calling reside not until 2005 what did i say 2005 see how many years so pastor what were you doing all those times those times i was working on myself but today you have people that will give their life to christ today and in three weeks time just like the way chicken is is harvested here in canada you eat three days four days old chicken praise god and the next thing they want to jump on the pulpit they want to say thus said the lord no god is a god of principle you must understand the area in which you are called and function there consistently and you will make headway and progress praise god are you ready for the next one the next one is accountability there is no accountability praise god when a person is not allowed them it's not allowing themselves to really believe that they can account for what they do even every one of us will give account on that day the bible said when we appear before the lord most high so it is also that system has not broken even in the church today we have to give account praise god we are there is no accountability there is no responsibility accountability is a sense of responsibility you must stay under authority of some mature minister and, and or a pastor and be accountable to them praise god obey them that have rules over you the bible says submit yourselves for they watch over your soul hebrews 11 hebrews 13 verse 17 hebrews 13 verse 17 they watch over your soul say obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your souls as they must give account are you seeing that have you ever read anywhere in the scripture that the congregation must give account of the pastor that tells you the responsibility that the pastor has he will give account of himself and he will give account of everybody under him that's why when somebody come to me and say you know god has called me i say really I say yes i say all right no problem am i to stop you for what who am i because when god is calling you i was not there I can't tell you no god didn't call you but know it that the calling to ministry is not the calling to come and enjoy yourself it's not the calling to come and sit down and enjoy and be served it's a calling of service and accountability even as a believer that you surrender your life to christ you must give account of how you live that life praise god he said they watch over your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy when you don't allow those over you to give account or to watch over you with joy the next thing is a grief comes in and when grief comes in the communication is cut off and when the communication cut off guess who comes in the middle uncle satan Because if you are cut off from the source that God say you have to be receiving the bread of life from, immediately that source is cut off. Another source will be attached. And that's the source of darkness. So Satan starts feeding your spirits day to day, night to night. Start telling you things. Start giving you some demonic ideas. Why? Because your source has been cut off. And I hear you say, Lord, help me. The next, are you ready? The Holy Spirit is your partner. 
the holy spirit is the closest and the best friend you have there is no you see this thing they call my bestie my bestie my bestie when it is time for you to go into certain challenges in life your bestie can never go in there with you just so you know your bestie has always been christ the holy spirit has always been your best man your best your best friend because he tells you things that even the one you think is your best friend can't tell you he reveals things of the secrets to you who else is better to be my chatty chatty body other than the holy spirit that's why i say you are under this ministry you got to watch out you, you must grow you can't hide anything you can't put anything aside inside of this place is very strong searchlight praise god we must allow the holy spirit minister to us are you there he is your guide your comforter your counselor and your teacher make the holy spirit your associate and partner and you will excel in life i tell you sometimes i go on the floor in my house and i lay down on my face down alone and i will cry call him a logical person will say what is he doing who is there in the house with him a man was stopped by a police officer for over speeding it was night and the police officer asked the question how many of you are in this car the man was alone he said i am here with god the father god the son god the holy spirit and all the host of angels and the policeman said i charge you for overloading <laughs> Praise God. You must have that consciousness of Him. You want to see God. You want to experience the Holy Spirit. Be conscious of Him. The children of Israel were told to be careful so they don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Because you can grieve Him. Can He depart? Yes. He can depart from you. If He's grieved. put down this scripture acts chapter 1 verse 8 we're not going to read that for time lastly lastly living a holy life before god god is holy god calls us to holiness also you cannot live in sin and expect god to bring you into the place of excellence in life first peter chapter 1 verse 16 verse 15 to 16 first peter chapter 1 verse 15 to 16 first peter chapter 1 verse 15 he said but as he which had called you is what come on talk to me is what so be ye holy in all manner of what <laughs> all manner of the way you relate What kind of conversations you have? You do have. More especially when it has to do with brethren. Why is it that at your workplace, everybody knows you as a chatterbox? And people that talk too much have tendencies to change a story. The Bible said, these six things do what the Lord hates. Says the seventh is an abomination. He that causes division amongst brethren. These six things the Lord hates. The seventh 
is an abomination. Disunity. When we have conversation, let our conversation be without offense and have a direction of purity and holiness. Void of offense. Void of accusations. Give me verse 16. He said, because it is written, be ye what? For I am, for I am, for I am. And we know that our righteousness is the righteousness of Christ. Meaning, we don't live our life, we live the life of Christ. Who is in us? For Christ in you is the hope of glory. So the hope of that holy life is Christ being in you. And Christ being in you is not like Jesus himself. The Bible says he, he, he is gone. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, who is, is his representative here right now with you and I is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit maketh intercession for us. Praise God. While he is resident inside of us, The Bible call him the wonderful counselor. In the Greek, Alos Parakletos, one that looks like me, almost me, but not me. The Holy Spirit is the actual representative of Christ. That's why when you pray, say, in the name of Jesus Christ, it is not Jesus that comes out. No, it's the Holy Spirit that goes into action. So if that Holy Spirit is in you, he polishes your heart. Every one of us know that before we take on any step that may be detrimental, the Holy Spirit spoke to us, but we ignore that voice because it's not, it's not a forceful voice. It's a voice that sometimes when he tells you no, you feel like your no, that no makes you weak. So you want to be strong. We got to understand that these steps that have been given today before you you sleep tonight go over them if you need to go over this message you can go over this message and ask yourself where am i now you will know ask yourself am i at the meditation level do i meditate have i crossed the meditation level do i even study which was the first one study to show yourself approved this whole steps you must not you must not come from it because you can't live a holy life when you don't study about god you should follow what then shall be holy unto you if you don't know what is holy bow your heads From the inside, from the inside of me, of me who are from the inside, from the, from the inside of me, Lord, let praises arise. Open your mouth and ask the Lord, Father, reveal yourself to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord, in your word. Reveal yourself mightily to me. You to be glorified for you to be lifted high all I want is for you you to be glorified for 
you to be lifted high. All I want is for you, you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Father Lord, I thank you for every soul here. I thank you for everyone, O oh Lord. May we not be just the hearers alone. May we operate as doers of the word. May your glory saturate all over our lives. May your anointing hit us from left and right. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord, to us afresh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For I give you all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And amen. Let that amen come like thunder. Hallelujah. Put those hands together to the Lord.